everybody. This is Paul Wing, and I've come to tell you the story of the unsuccessful elf. Once there was a little elf named Edgar. Of course, Edgar's mother was a fairy, because the mother of every elf is a fairy. Her name was Frances Fairy, but everybody called her Franny. And of course, Edgar's father was a gnome, because the father of every elf is a gnome. His name was Nicodemus Gnome, but everybody called him Nick. Franny Fairy and Nicodemus Gnome were very proud of Edgar Elf because Edgar was the handsomest elf ever born in Fairyland. As Edgar lay in his little cradle, which was made of a rose petal with two curved blades of grass for rockers, Franny would just sit and look at him, and she would say, Isn't Edgar just the handsomest Belfie you ever saw? In Fairyland, you see, every baby elf is called a Belfie. And Nicodemus would grin from ear to ear and say, Yep because he was a gnome of few words, but he meant every one of them. Now, Belfies usually grow very slowly, so you can imagine how surprised Franny and Nicodemus were when Edgar Elf began to grow very fast. Why, when he was born, Edgar weighed exactly seven caraway seeds and five millet seeds, and he was exactly the right size for his rose petal cradle. But by the time he was one week old, he had grown so fast he weighed exactly seven pounds and five ounces. And when Franny tried to put him in his cradle, the grass blade rockers just folded right up and the rose petal went flat as a pancake. Well, Franny Fairy waved her magic wand over the flat rose petal. And at once there was a sound like a million tiny wings flying through the air. And there, instead of the rose petal, stood a beautiful solid maple cradle in the purest fairy colonial style. Plenty big enough for Edgar Elf. Nicodemus grinned from ear to ear and said, Franny, that was brilliant. Franny just patted Nicodemus on the back and laid Edgar gently in his cradle and said, I can hardly wait until Edgar is six years old so we can begin to teach him elfin magic and making wishes come true and making little things get big and making big things get little and wand waving and all the other things an elf should know to be a successful elf. Won't that be fun, she said. Nicodemus grinned from ear to ear and said, Yep. But Edgar just kept right on growing and growing and growing. Now, most Belfies are just about three inches tall when they get to be a year old. That's just about as tall as your father's middle finger. But not Edgar. By the time he was a year old, Edgar was almost 24 inches tall, and that's just about as tall as a regular baby. By the time he was three years old, he was much too big for his cradle. So Franny Fairy waved her magic wand over Edgar's maple cradle. And at once there was a sound like a million tiny wings flying through the air. And there, instead of a cradle, stood a beautiful solid maple crib. And now, if you'll turn this record over, I'll tell you what happened on Edgar's sixth birthday. Well, the years just seemed to fly past, and all the time, Edgar kept growing and growing and growing. And one very strange thing had been happening while he had been growing. The bigger he grew, the smaller his wings became, until on the day he was six years old, with a sound like that, his wings disappeared altogether. Without his wings, Edgar looked very much like a little boy and not at all like an elf. Anyway, it was now time for him to learn all the things an elf should know to be a successful elf. So for Edgar's sixth birthday, Franny and Nicodemus gave him a beautiful fairy wand made of ebony inlaid with ivory with a twinkling diamond star right at its tip end. You'd have thought Edgar would have been very pleased with it, but he wasn't. He looked at Franny Fairy and he said, Of course, it's a very nice wand, Mama, but I wish I had a bicycle instead. I do declare, cried Franny, I can't understand why an elf should want a bicycle. But if you're sure that's what you want, why there's no better time than right now to begin to learn elf in magic. So while Edgar held his wand, Franny held his hand in hers and showed him how to wave it. Nicodemus just sat by on a dandelion and watched. At last, Franny pointed to a flower and said, Now wave your wand over that fairy bell. Think hard, and then say these magic words. Fairy bell, fairy bell, fly into space. Bicycle, bicycle, come in its place. So Edgar stood by the fairy bell and waved his wand over its little flower. There was a sound like a million tiny wings flying through the air. The fairy bell quivered on its stem and then stood still, and nothing happened. 
Oh, darling, Franny cried. You forgot to say the magic words Mama taught you. Nicodemus shook his head and puckered his lips and said, So Edgar waved his wand again and said, Fairy bell, fairy bell, fly into space. Bicycle, bicycle, come in its place. But just then he thought of something else. He waved his wand again and said, And please have a bell and electric lights and balloon tires on you. Well, there was a sound like a million tiny wings flying through the air. The fairy bell quivered on its stem and then stood still. And nothing happened. Oh, darling, Franny said, you must speak your piece just as Mama taught it to you. Don't say anything else. And anyway, she said, why you want electric lights with all the willing fireflies there are in fairyland is more than I can see. Well, Edgar waved his wand again and said, Fairy bell, fairy bell, fly into space. Bicycle, bicycle, come in its place. Then he stopped and waited. The fairy bell quivered on its stem. Franny and Nicodemus and Edgar listened, but they didn't hear the sound of a single tiny wing. At last, the fairy bell stopped quivering, and then nothing happened. Nicodemus shook his head sadly. A tear squeezed itself out of Edgar's eye and dropped down on the fairy bell with a tiny... But Franny Fairy patted Edgar's shoulder and said, Never mind, darling. I expect all you need is a little more practice. Try again. And just then, we came to the end of this record. So you put on the next one. Franny Ferry said, Try again. So Edgar did. He tried a hundred times that day until he was all tired out. The next day, he tried two hundred times until he was twice as tired. And the third day, he tried three hundred times until he was three times as tired. But nothing happened. So Franny and Nicodemus spent the next three days trying to teach Edgar making wishes come true, but he couldn't seem to learn that. Then they spent six days trying to teach him making little things get big, but it was no use. So they spent twelve days trying to teach him making big things get little, but he couldn't learn that either. Nicodemus Gnome's face got longer and longer. He had begun to suspect the truth. Franny had begun to fear it. And Edgar was perfectly sure of it. There was no use pretending anymore. Edgar was an unsuccessful elf. He was so disappointed that he simply burst into tears. But Franny said, Never mind, darling. If you can't make that stubborn flower turn into a bicycle, Mama will wave her wand over it. Then you'll see. And she waved her wand over the fairy bell and said, Fairy bell, fairy bell, fly into space. Bicycle, bicycle, come in its place, and I'm not fooling. Just as she spoke the last word, there was a sound like a million tiny wings flying through the air. And there, instead of the fairy bell, was a shiny new bicycle with a bell and electric lights and a three-toned horn that Edgar hadn't even thought of. Nicodemus took one look at the bicycle and said, Franny, that was brilliant. And as Edgar got on the bicycle, Franny called to him, Careful, darling, better let Papa hold it for you till you learn to ride. But Edgar called out, Don't worry, Mama, I won't fall off. And he rode the bicycle right down the forest path that leads from fairyland to the real world. Franny said, Well, I do declare, just look at that, without a particle of practice. Edgar was riding beautifully, but just the same, Franny thought she and Nicodemus had better follow him into the real world just to make sure he didn't get into any trouble. So Franny took Nicodemus by the hand and made her wings beat rapidly, and off they flew. Just fast enough to keep up with Edgar on his bicycle. Edgar rode along the path until he came to the end of the forest, right at the edge of the real world. As he rode out of the forest, he saw a boy standing right in the middle of the path directly ahead of him. Edgar rang his bicycle bell and blew its three-tone horn madly. But he was going too fast, and the boy was too close. Franny was just about to swoop down and save Edgar and the boy with a little bit of magic when... As quick as that, Edgar suddenly leaned back on the bicycle seat and pulled the front wheel up into the air. Then as he rode along on one wheel, he spun the bicycle around and brought its front wheel gently to the ground without so much as brushing the boy's clothes with it. High up over their heads, Franny looked at Nicodemus and said proudly, Wasn't that the most beautiful piece of bicycle riding you ever saw? And Nicodemus grinned from ear to ear and said, Franny, that was brilliant, but we've come to the end of this record, so it's time to turn it over.
Down on the ground, far below Franny and Nicodemus, Edgar looked at the boy. And the boy looked at Edgar. Edgar saw that the boy was holding a string in his hand. So Edgar said, what are you doing? And the boy said, flying my kite, see? He pointed up into the air. Now Edgar had never seen anyone flying a kite before, so he said, will you let me try it? And the boy handed his kite string to Edgar. Well, when Edgar took the kite string, the kite seemed to come to life. When the boy had flown it, the kite just stayed quietly up in the air. But Edgar made it fly in curves and spirals and loops and figure eights. He made it fly high. Or he made it fly low. Whichever he wanted. The boy was simply amazed. At last, he said to Edgar, Will you show me how to make it fly that way? Well, for more than an hour, Edgar tried to show him how to fly his kite. But the minute the boy took the kite string, the kite just stayed quietly up in the air, until finally the boy gave up. You are a pretty snazzy kite flyer, he said to Edgar. I can't make it do things at all. But will you teach me to ride a bicycle the way you do? Well, for more than two hours, Edgar tried to show the boy how he had made his bicycle stand up on one wheel and spin around and come to a stop. But every time the boy tried it, he just fell off. So finally, he gave that up, too. He just couldn't do it. So then he said to Edgar, Listen, my baseball team is going to play against another team today, and you're so good at bicycle riding and kite flying that I want you to pitch for my side. Edgar said, Well, I don't know whether I can play baseball or not, but I'll be glad to try. Well, the minute Edgar began to play, the boy saw that Edgar could throw the ball farther and straighter than any of the other boys, even the older ones. And when the ball was thrown to Edgar, he caught it every time. He never missed. At last, it came Edgar's turn to bat the ball. As she watched from above, Franny was worried. She was afraid Edgar might miss the ball, and she didn't want him to be disappointed. So she made up her mind to swoop down and wave her wand over Edgar and his bat, so he would hit the ball with magic even if he missed it with his bat. But the boy who was throwing the ball was too fast for Franny. Before she could swoop, he threw the ball toward Edgar. Edgar leaned forward and took a good swing at the ball. There was a sharp... And the ball flew high up into the air and sailed far, far over the fence. Edgar had knocked the ball clear out of the park. Franny turned to Nicodemus as they soared around high over the heads of the ball players. Nicodemus, she said, I have just made a great discovery. Edgar really isn't an elf at all. Well, Nicodemus looked surprised. I don't know how he happened to be born into our family, said Franny Fairy. He's not the right size for an elf, he doesn't look like an elf, and he can't do the things that every successful elf must do. But, she said, the minute he began to do the things a little boy ought to be able to do, just see how wonderfully he did them. You see, my dear, said Franny, Edgar is not an unsuccessful elf as we feared. He's a very successful little boy. And that is the story of the unsuccessful elf.